Good to be here, Linda. So I want to start with uh, the Russian war in Ukraine, which the U.S. president seemed to speak most forcefully about towards the end of his address to the U.N. General Assembly, calling it an illegal war of conquest, saying that if we allow Ukraine to be carved up, is the independence of any nation secure? What did you make of his comments and his call for other people to stand up and other nations to stand up for Ukraine on this issue? Well, he is reminding the audience, which um, includes non-Western nations that have gotten closer to Russia in the past year, that this action against Ukraine, uh, allowing it to stand, means something like that could happen to any of them across Africa, Latin America, parts of Asia. But increasingly, you're seeing this nexus of market and diplomatic power between Russia, China, North Korea. Um, trying to reach out over the tops of um, heads of Western nations and create a new network that would challenge the Western supremacy. And they're finding a lot of takers. So Biden is trying to fight that and remind people of the principle of territorial sovereignty, which Ukraine's um, dilemma right now, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, represents. And can we know that for the first time since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, the president of Ukraine will address the UN General Assembly? In the past, he's faced some criticism for seeming to be ungrateful for some of the weaponry, some of the aid that has come into his country. What sort of tone do you think he will strike today and what appeal will he make to the audience there? I think Zelensky very much feels the clock is running on the international aid he's getting to prosecute this war, whereas Russia's resolve doesn't seem to have been uh, lessened at all. So what he's been trying to argue all of this time is we need more of these weapons faster. We need long-range missiles. We need more long-range um, and sophisticated jets and training. Because every time you delay giving that to us, we literally lose the human capital we need to fight this war. Ukraine hasn't revealed its casualty figures, but we know that they, like Russia, have lost tens of thousands of troops. But they're much smaller than Russia. They have much fewer <laughs> troops to give. And uh, U.S. military folks who've been training some of these uh, Ukraine troops outside the country talk about the fact that they're not fighting age men. A lot of these people are in their 40s. They're computer engineers. They're, uh, they're the kind of person that you reach out for when you're fighting age people who are either engaged in the front lines or have already been lost. So there is real depression and worry inside Ukraine about sustaining this fight. Uh, Zelensky's also been hearing from some diplomats who tell him look, you've probably got about one more year's aid, and then people are really going to start pushing you towards uh, negotiating some sort of peace with Russia, even if it means losing territory. And uh, that one-year deadline, if, if it does indeed, indeed exist, uh, it makes more sense when you consider the fact that there is an election that's due to take place uh, late next year here in the United States, and already you've got Republican presidential candidates are expressing the fact that they have less support for pouring any more money, funds, weaponry into Ukraine, into this war with Russia. So no doubt he has to also appeal to the, the American domestic audience. Yes, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, who is the leading GOP candidate, has been very anti-continuing aid to Ukraine, even though Republican stalwarts on Capitol Hill um, have been uh, backing that aid. Um, but they're looking ahead. Zelensky is looking ahead to an uncertain time where the White House might not be supporting him. I think uh, the Biden administration is very well aware of that. And that's why you heard the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin today at the Ukraine contact group call on other European nations who are part of this continuing um, aid effort for Ukraine to provide as much as they can, whether it's artillery or long range missiles or some sort of missiles, um, because U.S. Uh, officials know that their chance to give aid could be running out could be curtailed by a coming change at the White House.
Kimberly Doja. We'll have to leave it there for now, but good to have you on the program as always. Thanks so much.